Do you ever just sit back and reflect on your life? Think about where you started and where you are today. Think about the good times and how you have grown and the friends and memories you have made. My name is Dan Collins, the face of Hardway Outdoors. I'm going to tell you a story. The story of my life and the story of Hardway Outdoors. Ten years of YouTube. What? Crazy. From the day I was born, the outdoors is in my blood. As soon as I could walk, I had a stick bow and a fishing rod in my hand. I grew up in a small rural town in central Pennsylvania, and right outside my door there was endless woods and water to explore. I was fortunate enough to come up in a very outdoorsy family, uh, just hunting and fishing and going camping a lot. What? Bow? Bow? My father was really the person that got me into the outdoors and sparked my interest. I remember always looking at his bucks and his turkeys on the wall and just wanting that for myself when I grew up. I wanted to be like him. My dad took me on a few turkey and deer hunts when I was younger and I'd go fishing with the family and I was just hooked at a very young age in the outdoors. 12, 14, 13, Dan harvested a spike and I harvested a button buck at the same time. We're at the old Gaswell gate. The old killing zone. The antler's going to fall off, right? Well, yeah, that's how we'll get a bigger spread on them. Yeah. I hit him that time. Dad just shot at a buck twice. Definitely hit it the second time down this meadow here. We're going to check it out and see what happened. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe six, seven. Seven points. Is that good or what? Uh huh? Tell me we're not awesome. Nice job. It's huge. What a gobbler. That's pretty big. That's a nice one. Nice rope on him. Congratulations. That's a nice turkey, man. I didn't think he was this big. No, I, I didn't saw think. His, I saw three points. Yeah. I saw his one side. I knew he was big enough. And uh, look at that. It was a big buck. That it's is big. big.
Around the time of fourth or fifth grade was a very pivotal time in my outdoors life. I started going to Jim Sports Center in Clearfield, Pennsylvania with my good friend Thomas Summers. After school we would walk to Jim Sports Center and tie flies there. We were tying flies there with some very knowledgeable and experienced anglers from all different backgrounds. Guys doing musky stuff, smallmouth, streamers, wild trout, dry fly, brook trout, whatever you want to do, they were doing it. I was flooded with so much knowledge from these anglers at such a young age and they really inspired me to become a better fly fisherman and better fly tire. I would always take a peek at their vice and see what they were tying and then go home and tie it for myself and try to listen in on their conversations where they're fishing and whatnot. And they have no clue how much they inspired me at such a young age and I thank them so much. So a huge thank you goes out to Rich Ferreira, Tracy McCaffus, Todd DeLucia, Dan Morris, Pat Lombardo, and most of all, Terry Malloy. Thank you all for inspiring me and teaching me so much, and you all still teach me so much to this day. We got them forward here, right here, about 80 yards. They're working their way up here. Oh, yes. I just shot it down. Dan Collins with his first bow kill. About time. White tail doe on October 11th, 2014. Me. About 4.15, we were down in the right spot in the pines and Dan connected on a nice eight point. Boy, what do you think, Dan? That's awesome. Isn't that nice? Nice eight point buck. Been a long season. <laughs> Yeah, it started this morning. Yeah, archery. Yeah, and you earned it. You earned that buck. Here's my first ever beaver, 2016. I'd say it's about a uh, 15, 15 pound beaver. <coughs> He's out. That's why they invented the catch pole. Look, you're, you're free, dude. There he goes. Not a bad rat. My first ever rat. Really, really cool little animal. Well, I'm a very, very happy man right now. And uh, I will show you why. That right there, it's a Pennsylvania bobcat. He's not happy. Not happy. There it is, Pennsylvania bobcat, 2014. There he is, beautiful animal. I could not be happier. I just shot a huge buck, big buck. I don't know how many points, but there's a lot of them. He's dead right there. Probably a hundred yards. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Today, December 2nd. It's around 4.30. I just shot the biggest buck I've ever killed. This is a beautiful public land. 10 point, Pennsylvania. I couldn't be happier. This is Here's the secret ticket for sitting all day. Oh, it smells like America. A McChicken, baby. Throughout middle school is really when I took a grasp into fishing. It seemed like every waking second I could, I was on the water. If I wasn't playing baseball or at school, I was fishing. During the summers, my mom would take me to the river on her way to work, drop me off, and when she went home, she'd pick me up. So I spent all day at the river, learning how to fish for carp, smallmouth, trout, 
learning my knots and learning patience. Or my grandparents would take my brother and I to a local lake. We would just fish for bluegill and bass. And my grandparents would always say, all right guys, you ready to go home? I'd say one more cast. Well, 70, 80 casts later, I'm still fishing. How is that for the first fish of the day? My biggest wild brown trout ever. Gorgeous fish, I'm gonna get some good pictures and get them released. Absolute awesome fish. Tail, just a gorgeous fish. <laughs> just caught a stud of a rainbow on a wet fly. This fish. It's the third big one today. I can't believe that. It never happened. Awesome rainbow. Are you serious? There's nice, beautiful fish. Look at this. Richest fish. Awesome, man. Very nice brown. He'll go 20 inches, I'd say. Freaking awesome, Dad. Beauty. So the next thing you know, I'm in high school and I met my one friend Tyler O'Leary and he was making some very simple fly fishing videos and put them on YouTube. And I'm like, wow, I want to try that. I want to give that a shot. And at the time I was watching other YouTubers like Leatherwood Outdoors and the Lively Legs guys. And they were just Pennsylvania guys putting out very simple hunting and fishing videos. And I was like, man, I could do that. I want to give that a shot. So I believe it was December 21st, 2011. I made my YouTube account. And the original name was not Hardway Outdoors, it was Fishing Rebel 10. I have no clue where I got that name, but that's what I had for about two years before I switched it to Hardway Outdoors. All right, we're out here fishing on the boat and uh, hopefully gonna catch some nice fish. Got my buddy Noah behind the camera. Oh, it's a little pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seed. Show it to the camera. Big catch of the day right there. Nice carp. Nice carp here in the river. So I started the channel my freshman year of high school in 2011, and here I am two years out of college, still making videos, loving every second of it. The first few videos I ever put out on YouTube were some fishing picture slideshows, some shed hunting videos, and some random videos of me shooting a pellet gun in my backyard. There's a mouse in the yard. I saw it running around here earlier this morning and I just I think I just got a glimpse of it. Uh, enjoy the hunt. Be quiet. Be really quiet. There it is. I got it. That's what I call a hunt right there. I've been scouting this area for days now and finally got the job done. This is this is amazing. And then I started making some fly tying videos. And looking back on them, I think my favorite video I ever made of fly tying was when I tied a San Juan worm. And for those that don't know, a San Juan worm is a red fly. It's an imitate a worm. And I wore a red t-shirt, so I'm sitting there in the background tying this fly, and you can't even see the fly because it's red, and I'm wearing red. And I just look back at that and think it's hilarious. Because I didn't care about quality, I didn't care about any of that. I was just having fun making videos. Good afternoon, we're tying a San Juan worm today. And sorry, I'm, I'm wearing a red shirt. Kind of doesn't really go with the fly, but it doesn't matter. Just gonna do the same to the other side. And there you go, the San Juan worm. 
So the first two or three years of YouTube, I filmed on an iPod Touch. My parents' computer didn't accept video from a camcorder, so I was just doing what I could and filming on my iPod. I had a free video editing app. I would edit the videos on there and upload them from there, and that's what I did for maybe two or three years. So finally, my parents got a new computer that accepted video from my camcorder, so I could edit videos on a computer and upload them from there. And at the time, I was getting better at hunting and fishing and editing, and, and more people started following along with the channel. Mark. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I just shot a big buck. And this is pretty rewarding. This is nice to be behind a buck. I got a doe with my recurve. I got a bear last Tuesday. And God is too good to me. God is too good to me. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> that's the biggest brown trout I've ever caught. That's a He's fat. Very, very healthy fish. There's a belly on that thing. There he goes. That's another really good fish. It's another 20. Same, sound, about the same length. Gorgeous. I can't beat it. Wow. Such a BN. Pretty. There he is. Nice fish. See right there? Yes! Got a doe. 2016 three curve. I remember the first time I ever got recognized in public from YouTube. I don't even think I had a thousand subscribers yet. I was up in Medix Run, Pennsylvania. I was walking into the Medix Hotel. I held the door for somebody as they were walking out. They said thank you and I just went in and had something to eat. And I get home to a comment saying thank you for holding the door for me at the Medix Hotel. Love the videos. And that blew me away, man. I thought I got a gold star on Hollywood or something. It was just an unreal experience for me to not even have a thousand subscribers and somebody recognized me in public, man. I was just some kid. I was probably 14 or 15 at the time. And that meant so much to me. And around the same time frame, I was at the Eastern Traditional Archery Rendezvous in Denton Hill. I spent the week shooting bow there and I got home and I noticed a comment that said, hey, I saw you at Denton Hill. I was too afraid to say hi. And that comment really blew me away because there I was, 14, 15 years old. Someone saw me, recognized me from YouTube, and was too afraid to say hi to me, but they left a comment. Those two comments still stick to me to this day and motivate me to make videos. And I can't thank those two people enough. I apologize, I have no clue who left those comments. But if you're still watching, thank you so much. You guys meant so much to me at the time, and you still do. Hi guys, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Hardway outdoors, right? Yes, sir. How you doing? Buddy? Good. How are you? Very good. Oh, I wish I'd be out front. Look at you. Got you anything? Yeah, I did pretty good. Shout out to that guy that just recognized me. <laughs> and then his girlfriend hit me with a kayak. <laughs> And I'll be honest, there was a few times I was going to delete the channel entirely and quit making videos, but it's just going back through the comments, reading the positive feedback, having people reach out to me, recognize me in public, saying they love the videos, they're big fans. Those go so far and really motivate me to keep making videos, and I can't thank everybody enough who's left a positive comment. And if it wasn't for the positive feedback, I definitely wouldn't be doing videos still, so thank you so much. Beauty fish, Jesse. Nice. Really? Every time I'm cooking dinner. 
Yo, it's up, it's up. Oh my god! Hog! Hog! Oh my god! Yeah! Yes! Dude, I cannot cook lunch! <laughs> Yeah, lunch is ready. Lunch is ready. <laughs> yeah, by the way, lunch is ready. My biggest round ever. Oh my god. That's what we're talking about. Time brown trout. Tyler's biggest awesome. brown. Are you shaking a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, Holy I'm shit. so pumped, dude. <laughs> what are we making? Sausage gravy and toast assist. That's how, that sounds awesome. It's incredible. This will change your life. There he goes. Bye, Scooter. Get we'll some. We'll be back for you when you're bigger. Dude, get some. <laughs> I've got the lovely bunch of coconuts. Do you the sausage? You fishing by bluegills. Woo! <laughs> get some. Going fishing. Actually, we're going to Duncan because I'm so tired and I eat a coffee. And then we're going fishing. There he is. He's in the net. It's a 20. Put the hat on him. Got him on a nymph. Oh yeah. Measured him at 19, beautiful wild brown. There he goes. And it is midnight. Just after midnight, Lou and I just got back from fishing for salmon for the better part of the afternoon with Clayton. On the way up, the lake looked beautiful, so Lou's like, Dan, you wanna go fish? And I'm just like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> oh, he good. He used the lake trout on the fly. Very cool. Go. Fourth lake trout of the night. Eat a few Kit Kats. Thanks to the Kit Kats, <laughs> my, my boy. <laughs> Yikes. I feel like the second you step foot in high school, you're constantly getting bombarded. Where are you gonna go to college? What are you gonna do with your life? And I was just worried about the next fish I was gonna catch. I wasn't thinking about the future. Around my sophomore year of high school, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. I tossed around ideas of being a taxidermist or being an electrician, going to culinary school or even being an engineer. All I knew was that I didn't want to be stuck in a job that I hated the rest of my life. Around my sophomore year of high school, I attended the Rivers Conservation and Fly Fishing Youth Camp in Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. You go and learn about entomology, geology, watershed management, fisheries, and so many other outdoor careers. So that camp really changed my life and I would recommend any kid that is remotely into the outdoors or fly fishing to attend that camp because it changed my life. The instructors have so much knowledge, they have so many different backgrounds. It's a great atmosphere with kids your age and I cannot thank everybody at that camp enough. Just spending four or five days at that camp really changed my life and made me realize I wanted a job in the outdoors. I didn't know what field I wanted to go into but I knew I wanted to work outdoors. So a huge thank you to all the instructors at that camp and for all your knowledge and for changing my life forever. And another huge thank you to Austin Alger, Kyle Zendell, and Ryan Heisler for making that a great week. There goes the only fly that worked. <laughs>
What do you got for lunch today? This Italian. That's what I'm talking about. Now you think that you catch a rainbow with their graylings. I mean, that's arctic grayling all day. Look at that fin. Look at this fish. Man. Get close on the water too. Oh. <laughs> we got a good uh, fish ball. Hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> There he lays. He's down. All right, here he is, my 2020 Pennsylvania buck. I have no clue how many points he has. Check out this right side. This is what I first saw. I saw this when he was coming in, and I'm like, holy crap, that's cool. He's not a big buck, but I don't even care. That is one of the coolest, most beautiful bucks I've ever seen in my life. But your Uber deer is here. My Uber deer. <laughs> How about it? That is congratulations. Thanks, man. Sir. Appreciate it. That is one hell of a buck. Well, we got him to dry land. Very nice. So in high school, we had to do a college visit to be able to graduate, and I had no clue where I wanted to go. I believe it was my junior year of high school. My really good friend Kurt Collins mentioned to me that there's this college offering fisheries. They're having a meet day for prospecting students. You go and electro fish, you sit in a fisheries class, and then you get to go fishing with the students. And I'm like, heck yeah, let's go to that. If I can get out of class and play with fish, I'm about that. So Kurt and I both went to that, and we figured out where we wanted to go to college and what we wanted to major in, and that was fisheries biology. Oh yeah. It looks ugly. Look at that. Articulated sculpin. Got a big old native <laughs> on the <this> sculpin. <laughs> Throw some saltfish. Proud of you, Dan. My freaking hand stinks. <laughs> <laughs> we got to burn everything. Oh my. Yeah, maybe that was him. Alfredo got his spinner. Stuck on the edge of the ice out here. I'm gonna show you guys how to get it back. So what we did, we detached the reel from the rod. We're gonna tight hold the line tight with the reel. We're just gonna throw the rod down the line. But it worked. <laughs> My high school years were great, and I cannot thank my friends enough that I got to share the woods and water with. Those were truly special times, and I will never forget them. So thank you to Jimmy and Wade Shirey, Kirk Collins, Josiah McLaren, Ryan Spencer, Noah Klein, Jonas Cohan, John Janoko, Jack Solt, Brian Newsom, Jeff Buck, Pat Collins, Thomas Summers, and Kyle Grumblatt. Thank you all for those great memories. All right, go on a carp with the bow fishing. There's blood dripping everywhere. But... Well, get it out of my boat. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm serious, here. that's gross. Stick around, guys. Get the arrow, just give me the arrow and let me hold it so I can take a picture of me with it, because I shot it. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, here's that fish. This thing's huge. All right, Brian has his first carp on ever. Where's he at, right here? Got him in the net. It's a big one. It's a big one. Nice. Nice fat body though. Nice healthy. Off and up bugs. He's a he's dark too. One pound ten ounce. Really? It's a nice fish though. Biggest of the day? One pound ten ounce. Solid fish.
I'm so pumped. Up, bro. <laughs> yep. That's what you I told you. He's cameraman, though. Me? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Pretty crazy morning. We had five drivers kind of go out, and four of us got shots of bears. Yeah, we ended up getting two cinnamon phase. I shot black one. Yeah, we ended up getting six bears in that drive, and three got away. So like number one thing with steelhead and if you guy hook a fish, you go surround him. Number one rule, if you want to put yourself on fish, you gotta find the fish. But you gotta let other people do that. Save yourself time, save yourself the effort. Once you see someone hook a fish, you surround them. It's well, at mid-January now. They're blitzing. Uh, they're out there, they're out there in the lake eating whatever, eating baby smallmouth, eating sturgeon, doesn't matter what you throw out. I'm just gonna find a fish. It's the biggest thing. So something a lot of people don't know about me is I was competing a lot in fly fishing competitions throughout Pennsylvania and New York in my college years. I was competing with some of the best anglers in the United States and I would put money on that. Just unbelievable anglers and even better people. The camaraderie was second to none. I fished with so many great anglers and learned so much, made so many great memories and made so many friends that I'll have the rest of my life. So I also tried out for Team USA. I ended up qualifying for Team USA national competitions. I ended up moving to Alaska and not being able to go to the competition. And then COVID hit and the competition was canceled anyway. But one of my goals in life is to make Team USA, so we'll see when we get there. To everybody I've fished competitions with, thank you so much for those great times. Huge thank yous go out to Ray Siani, Nick Malloy, Ross Dixon, Rich Ferreira, Tracy McAfoos, Chase Kreider, Mike Kamara, Ben True, Matt Kidwell, Pat Weiss, Ben Comfort, Tyler Olrog, Woody Anselmo, Mike Yamrick, Curtis Smith, Cody Schlemmer, and Cody Armanini. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Did you lose him? Hey, how you doing? What are we doing? Making knots. I usually cast them into my line, but this time I'm going to do it by hand. Nice. What's your hat? Jim Sports Center, 26 North 2nd Street, Clearfield. Get some. All right, that's going to be the last fish for the video. Get it back in the water. Here we go. First of the day. Beautiful laker. Good 18, 19 incher. About average for what I've been catching here. Oh my god! That's a big fish. Alright, I just caught this huge lake trout with Lou. We're trolling this evening. Dude. You're shaking, nice. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. There's a good one. Okay, so Tyler just hooked a little brown trout and was reeling it in, and he said a nice fish would try to come up and eat it. So I put a little streamer on, and Tyler said it was sitting right about there, so we're gonna see if we can get him to eat. Oh my god! Oh my! Did you see that? That was two foot long trout. Gone. He just stepped my line. I got the whole thing. Dude. Did you see the fish on the I thing? saw it, yeah. I told you he was there, dude. Are you kidding me?
all season. I found his shed down over this mountain about a mile and a half last March. sheds spring of 2019 hunted them all last fall tons of pictures of them i had a home range pretty much pinned down i had an encounter with them in the rut over here last year last time i ever saw that buck trail camera picture fourth day rifle season at noon running in front of my camera so a lot of people ask me what my favorite youtube video is that i've uploaded my answer every time is my first buck with a recurve. It was my senior year of high school in 2014. I went out after school almost every single day trying to get a buck with my recurve. I finally got one on November 4th, 2014. November 4th, 2014. In the tree tonight <clears throat> in Central PA. This has been the greatest archery season I've ever had. I cannot <laughs> complain about this. Uh, about a month ago I shot my first doe, and now I have my first buck with the bow, and it is a very nice eight point, especially for where I'm hunting. It's very nice. Put the arrow right buck. through him, Dan. Yeah. You went right here's, through him. Here's the arrow. I shot like probably 20 yards, pouring away. Right there's the any. Recording away. It's hard to see. Yeah, I got it. Let's see what's That's a big buck. See what's it. Come out his chest. Yeah, right. Right under his arm. Right here. Perfect. Oh my god. Perfect place. Perfect spot. Congratulations, Dan. The way I came up with the name Hardway Outdoors is because I do think the hard way. Traditional archery and fly fishing aren't really the easiest ways to go about hunting and fishing. So I just kind of came up with the name Hardway Outdoors. And Hardway isn't even a word. I made it up. I have my own word. <laughs> that is my biggest New York buck. It's also my first one. What is he, an eight point? He's an eight point. Oh yeah. I'm really, really happy about that. Hey, sure enough, he bedded down right here, closed the distance in. Took me 22 minutes to cover like 15 yards, but snuck a bullet in and put him down right here. I have not told Ryan what we're doing, he's not in the truck yet, but we are taking a raft out. My buddy Jesse's raft, we're taking it out, and we're gonna try to get a deer from it. So medium tension, I'll call for the top for anything else? That'll be all. All ready, go ahead and pull her under the window, open the floor there. There you go. There's Jesse. <laughs> what do I do with my hands? Just keep them down. <laughs> Floating? <laughs> oh, he nailed wow. it! <laughs> Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Dan. What are we doing? Sending it. Yes, sir. How are you feeling, Ryan? Feeling good. Let it go. Merp. Merp. 
there. Get the turkeys. There's turkeys everywhere. <laughs> Run! Yeah. Great. Easter egg baby. Nectar of the gods. That's what I have to deal with today. I've shot traditional archery my entire life. I started hunting with a stick bow at the age of 12. I've met so many great people through traditional archery, especially going to traditional archery shoots. It is such a great community of nice people, and they've all taught me so much over the years. And everybody at those shoots inspires me to become a better shooter, better hunter, better outdoorsman. I cannot thank them enough. So a huge thank you goes out to the gang at Denton Hill. I cannot thank you enough for inspiring me to shoot traditional archery and teaching me so much along the way. So thank you to Mark, Stacy, Bill, Billy, Bob, Art, Chris, Rod, Joe, Badger, Tom, and Greg. Thank you guys so much for everything. No, different. the one I the one I got different, completely different buck. Yeah, this is bigger than all all of them. No, -uh. like dude, like. I'm telling you, buddy, like, it might be the biggest buck I've ever killed. No. Like, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not a small buck, and I'm not, I'm not kidding this time. Oh my god, he's right there, dude. No, -uh. that's a big buck. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> dude, he didn't go for it all. Chris, that's a big buck, dude. Mountain buck. Public land, 100% public land. Mountain, Mountain. buck. Acorn buck. Acorn buck. He's never seen a cornfield in his life. Yeah. Unreal. I Congrats, dude. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> That's a stud. He's on the tree today. It's November 9th. It's about 1.30. And it is the run. And it's snowing, baby. I'm pumped. Alright, so my camera died. My phone's about to die. My GoPro died. Everything's dead. I just shot an 8 point. Not a very big 8 point. Shot him through the neck. Got full penetration on him. I'm on the blood trail now. It's, the snow turned to rain. So I'm just gonna follow this real slow. Oh my god, what a beautiful buck. Oh, a beautiful deer. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Not even halfway, man. I heard he hiked two miles today. I hiked two miles squirrel hunting, he's tired out. Too fat for him. Here's my 2018 buck with a recurve bow here in public land. Beautiful buck. Now Ty and I got a little over a mile drag out. Dragging him out, Ty fell down the hill. Luckily we have this wet snow to just slide the buck down. <laughs> First deer with the recurve. I love it. She's a beautiful doe. November 16th, 2015. Archery season's over, so all I can really do is hunt some squirrels, hunt some small game. So hopefully it'll be a good night and get some squirrels on the ground. First gray squirrel of the evening. Chris shot again. He's just letting it ring up there. I think he went through a whole box of shells on this one squirrel. He's letting it fly down there. Alright. I don't think these guys can shoot. I fired two shots today. Killed two squirrels. Alright, got my buddy Chris, got my buddy Kyle. We came out this evening after class uh, to do some small game hunting. Primarily squirrel. I uh, saw a grouse, that's about it. But and uh, what, what's the next step, Kyle? Uh, shaking leg. 
shake and bake. Shake and bake. Yeah, we're gonna shake it <laughs> and bake it. Today's October 29th, around noon right now. Hunting with my buddy Ty, trying to get him his first deer ever. There she lays, dude. <sighs> Still good on her. I'll take it. My first deer and in the rain. Congratulations on your first deer, dude. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dan, for taking me out all these years and finally pays off. We'll get you a buck now. Heck yeah. So my college years were great. I learned a lot about fisheries and a lot about myself. I was also doing a ton of hunting and fishing in college as well, and I really grew a lot as an outdoorsman at that time. I made so many friends at college, and thank you all for sharing the woods and water with me. So a huge thank you goes out to Chris Tanzos, Josh Grazzi, Ryan Shaw, Dylan Hain, Andrew Wilson, Ty Fakeney, Eric Tanzos, Kyle Zendel, Tyler Mikowski, Kyle Troiano, Grant Nolan, Alex Bernard, Dylan Pruger, Ethan Daviau, Jake Canals, Pete Horger, Ben Weber, Graham Zeckman, and Ty Moon. Thank you all. This is for when I like bend over and lift the brook trout. No, actually, gill them. <laughs> right in there. Yeah. yeah. Gotta give him two fingers you on each finger side. Fingers. You gotta show people what's up first day. You're not, you're not screwing around here. I've been fly fishing for like at least three months right now. Okay, like, <laughs> dude, I have like, I have like over double digits of twenties. Like, dude, Wild Browns is, is like my middle name, Chris Wild Brown. So, I don't know. Like, it's whatever. Stay humble. I'm staying humble, yeah, dude. Like, you know, my sponsors also are like, hey, yo, stay humble. Like, it's good for the brand. So, it's what it's about. Here's your sponsors. Uh, power bait. That's a good one. Uh. You ever hear of uh, Orc Coolers? They're kind of like Yeti Coolers, but like <laughs> off-brand. Split Shot. <laughs> you know those little gray bags of Split Shot? Uh, gremlin. Water gremlin. Gremlin, yeah, yeah water, water Gremlin. <laughs> you don't even remember your own sponsor. That's whatever, oh. I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that's what we're here for, but uh, this is what we're here for, you know? Oh, oh, oh no! That was the most unathletic thing was... I've ever seen. That was horrible. You deserve to lose that. I have that all on film. Your tongue. Ew. <laughs> there you go. The trout eat it. Dan eats it. 20 seconds. May God bless your soul. Man, your battle stations. We are entering the fray. <laughs> Be back by spray. I hope to see you all on the other side. Five. Nope, ten. <laughs> May you die with order. We got the dragons down. Oh, nice shirt. Thanks, man. Hard way outdoors. Let's go get her. All right, here we are. This is my first ever out of state doe. Pretty big doe. This is the first day of New York archery season. I look ahead, and there is the biggest sheds I've ever found laying here. Wow. Pennsylvania. Stud. Public. Buck. Dude, what a freaking stud of a buck. Oh yeah, good fish. Nice man. Yep, there's one. Good one. Yeah, yeah. Good one, good one. Dude, solid fish. That thing is gorgeous. What a gorgeous fish. Beautiful spots. That is sweet. Man. You dirty dog. Congrats, man. I thought I saw. See how it dips down? Yeah. You dirty dog. Let's go. Oh my god. Dude. That's a really big buck. <laughs> it's a giant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out. <laughs> Dude. Oh, 
Hey, you missed that deer. You missed that deer. Good. Did you know that? I don't know how to turn this off. <laughs> So I finished my degree in fisheries biology and I'm fortunate enough to have had four jobs in the field in Pennsylvania, Alaska, and Idaho. I've had so many great co-workers at each job and I've made so many friends along the way and I cannot thank everybody enough. I've been very blessed to work in some beautiful places and meet so many great people and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. And I'm very thankful that I got into a field that I do not hate and I love my job every single day. How we do see man? We do real good. We're gonna go from here to over there. Go with these on our backs. Where are we gonna sleep tonight? We don't know. We're gonna find out. These K9 boys are not liking you. They're barking at you, not me. That's correct. Aha! <laughs> this is a grayling, right? Yes, sir. Do I wanna keep this grayling? That's a good one. Do I wanna eat this boy? Yes, sir. Alright, I'm eating him. <laughs> You're gonna be inside of me. All right, I'm ready to kill it now. What do you think? I think it's fish. <laughs> Definitely fish. <laughs> Taking a huge <laughs> in the tent in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh God, why did I eat that? Oh. With my friend Dan, I say the word <laughs> What do you want? And I told Dan, I was kind of a <laughs> about it. I said, Dan, I don't, I don't like stinky campsites. <laughs> Vibes. Any final words? Grizzly vibes. We're out here again with Lou today. Seas are pretty rough. It is June 18th. We're going after some lake trout once again on a new lake. I get splashed. What's up, Alfredo? What's up, man? You ready to get some? Yep. <laughs> found this freaking canoe next to this little lake. Now we're just fishing. <laughs> we're gonna try to fish. I guess there's lake trout in here, so gotta shove. <laughs> you don't move. Alright. <laughs> here, let's just fish here. Shovel for a paddle. Hi Dad. Good morning. How are you? Decent, how are you about yourself? Ready to leave. Are you ready to leave? Well we're all waiting on you. <laughs> That's not waiting on me, that's brushing his teeth. I'm waiting on no, Matt. No, he had time to brush his teeth. I also so, took time to brush my teeth. Did you brush your teeth, I you brushed, disgusting animal? I brushed okay, my teeth. Okay, good. Now let's go. What do you want? Is Clayton in your truck? No. Oh. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Good morning, Lou. We're gonna judge your butt this morning. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a big butt, but hopefully the weather cooperates and we can get out on the water. Hopefully the captain don't know what he's doing so we can actually not catch a fish today. <laughs> I'd say it's good. Sixty percent of the chance of the time we're gonna be catching a fish. Yeah, that's good. Clayton back here, he's putting his stuff in the car. I don't know what he's doing now. Can you help me? Just put my shirt. Not Jack Lake, so I don't have to worry about Bigfoot coming up on me. But if he does, we've got the bear spread. So through doing YouTube, I've met so many great people over the years that I've made connections with other YouTubers and fans of mine that I now call some really close friends. So thank you to the YouTubers that inspire me to become a better videographer and outdoorsman. And thank you to everybody who was a fan that reached out to me and now I can call you a friend. So thank you to Coy Donahue, Jimmy Owen, Jeff Schmidt, Kyle Hartman, Grant from the Everyday Outdoorsman, Justin Klee, Joel and Charlie Chilcote, Mike from Tightline, Maryland, Ryan Rochelle, Scott Grazzi, and Doug from Backyard Angling. Thank you all so much. Dude, is that her? No, no. It's a white belly, dude. Dude. 
Great job, Corey. Oh, yeah, there. Congrats, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you did it. a great job, man. I was shaking. I thought I was gonna fall on my stand. I was shaking. That's so the best bad. part. Man. We got a gang of stick bowers. Dylan just got his recurve. What? What? Last week? Yeah. Ethan, mm -hmm. last week got a recurve. <laughs> Chris, this is his first day shooting bow, ever. <laughs> there you go. Your first year with a freaking recurve. Needed a little help. Yeah. A little extra shots in it. That's why you get Dan the man to go with you. He's a man. That's why we call him Dan the man. I came out here. I kind of said, I like this spot in Onyx and walked out here and shot a deer. <laughs> Bought that bow last week. Yeah, I shot that for like three days. Also, <laughs> I hate freaking wet leaves. Wet leaves are the stupidest thing. Like. <laughs> also, I think my favorite smell in the world is deer. Doe asterisk and in a uh, golden rod. Those two scents together. Oh. Okay, we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> Hunt. Yeah. On he, public land in New York State. Yes. <laughs> That's two for the year, huh? Yes. <laughs> Both when I was walking around. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now it's your turn. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Is my light on? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Bacon, egg, and cheese for sale? Forgot my wallet. Oh. Whoops. Well, dine and dash, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have to kill some deer because she said it like that. <laughs> Dude, so Good much. Lord. Morning. I'm shot. <laughs> this is a this is a good meal. Good guide service. Oh yeah. This is Del oh, oh, Ryan, oh, yeah. Dylan, Dylan, nice Ryan. Meet you. Yeah. Okay, that was. Uh, cut that out. <laughs> Got my first raft beer thanks to Dan Collins, Hardway Outdoor Man. <laughs> Dude, that was wild. Three more tags in the boat. Three more tags, let's get them filled. I'm not sure what the future holds for me. I just kind of live day by day and go with the flow. But as for YouTube goes, this is going to be my last video and I'm sorry to say that. I appreciate all the love over the years, but I think it's just time for me to focus on myself. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hardway outdoors to the moon. Hardway outdoors forever. Yeah.
got to 300 and then I army crawled into 250 I believe it was and got him. What a hunt. What a hunt. I'm very thankful to draw this tag and experience this man this was awesome. Filming hunting and fishing videos become this huge part of my life and a huge passion of mine. You know, it started out with me just messing around making fishing videos, not thinking anything of it. But now it's so much more. It's become this avenue for me to have a voice and to teach others lessons that I've learned. I'm able to film my successes and failures in the outdoors and share them for other people to learn from. It's been a great way to interact and teach others as well as learn for myself. Another thing filming has done for me is keep a journal of my hunting and fishing adventures. I've always wanted to write it all down, but I've already been doing it and it's just through videos. So it's cool to be able to look back and learn from past trips that I have on video. This feels awesome. Man, it's a good buck. May 24th, 2014. I just saw myself a nice two-year-old gobbler. This was my first ever hunt that I killed something without my dad. And I, I mean, oh, I wish he was here. If he was here, we would've got a double because there was, there was that other one. I finally did it. I finally found my first elk shed. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I should jab him. That was a great hunt. It's four o'clock, the evening of the opening day, PA rifle season, and I just shot my smallest buck ever. Nice six point. He looked a lot bigger coming in, but I knew he wasn't huge. I see a curl on. I know. Dude, I was going for a spiker. First sit in New York. Buck dead. Buck dead. Traditional, 100% public land, state forest. First sit. First sit. Pretty dang good. And there is a lot more deer in here for us oh, to yeah. get after. I think this, this in the, in the, Give it a few the weeks and. It's gonna be real good. Yeah. This is unreal. Look how big this buck is. Holy crap. I'd like to wrap this documentary up with a little message, kind of how I live my life and my outlook on life. And that's live day by day. You're not guaranteed tomorrow and just live right now. Do what you want to do today. I know you've heard it a million times. Live each day like it's your last until you really start doing it is when you truly find happiness. I've been living by those words for the past few years of my life and I have never been happier. No one is guaranteed tomorrow, so just cherish your loved ones and cherish every waking second you have on this planet. So the biggest final thank you of all is to my family. Thank you for supporting me over the years and giving me so much more than I could ever ask for. Thank you to my mom, dad, my brother Matt, Pop and Grandma Johnson, Pop and Grandma Collins, and all my aunts, uncles, and cousins. Thank you all so much for being the best family and the most supportive family in the world. And I cannot thank everybody enough who's watched this documentary and followed along for the last decade. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much. Here's the next one. See this haze? It's all forest fire smoke. <laughs>